a new video. I'm testing out my green screen back here. The uh, green screen behind me here, but then my like normal like pegboard and tree gear is actually behind the camera on this on this occasion. So testing that out, I could use movie magic to put that right behind me. But right now I'm going to be here or I could be there in your own living room if you wanted. Anyway, uh, this video is going to be me talking about my favorite climbing ropes. And I'm sure a lot of people have different opinions and I want you to stick to, to the end. Basically, I'm going to be having you guys choose which line I buy next. Kind of in no particular order, I'm going to climb, talk about four different ropes. Two of them are going to be basically the same rope. That'll be this one and another one. So let's just start with that. So the first rope I want to talk about is the Samson Hyperclimb. And this rope is just been one of my favorites. I've wanted to buy this rope for a very long time. I just think it's a really classic 11.7 um, millimeter climbing rope, 24 strand, very awesome construction. That 11.7 always feels really nice in the hand. Anytime I can get that rope thickness, I have climbed on the past 11 millimeter rope, the Yale Blaze, and I thought it was just a little too small in the hand. I basically got this um, sometime in the past year from our obsession. Um, they put a great splice on it and yeah I've just been a big fan of the Yale ropes that are 11.7. Samson basically has leased out the exact same construction from like the Yale Blue Moon or the Poison Ivy ropes so you can see things like Silver Ivy and the different Samson version of Ivy out there. They're just a super popular rope. Uh, one thing I'll say is I, I still use this on a natural crotch, um, but only for SRS. If you're climbing in a moving rope system, you're definitely going to want to have this in a ring to ring because it is going to wear quickly. Like the jacket of this rope is going to fray and, and show some heat damage, basically, at least my old poison ivies used to protect these a lot. They don't like a lot of natural crotch friction. So good rope otherwise. <sighs> All right. Okay. So my next line is going to be talking about the Teufelberger ecstatic rope. And this one I have with just a like grizzly splice. I don't think I needed the splice on it. Sometimes I do cheat and use this for a basal anchor. I bought this rope basically wanting a super long static rope to use just for SRS. Like that's exactly the purpose for this rope. It's thicker than a lot of other static lines. Um, I've noticed a lot of them kind of in that 11, 11.2 um, diameter. Kind of just really love how the, you know, larger diameter rope feels in the hand how well it knots, just how it feels when it's running. This thing has been used a lot. I baby all my tree gear, so I have yet to kind of like get this thing really dirty or messed up in the field. But uh, it has served me well for a lot of climbs over the past, I would say, I've now owned it for almost three years. Yeah, I, I've just really liked this rope. It fits well with all my gear. I have yet to use it with an akimbo, but every other uh, SRS device, obviously including the rope wrench, has run super well and super smooth on this rope. Okay, so this next rope is like the newest addition to my climb kit. And this might disappear completely. This is the Petzl Flow Rope. And this is also, again, the larger diameter rope. I think this is 11.6 millimeters. And one of the curious things about it, obviously, is the splice. And that comes manufactured with the splice where the core is actually removed from the outer jacket. And then it's spliced in. And this is a really long splice. Like, I can feel overlap in the spl splice almost, you know, at least 12 to 14 inches past the actual eye. It's great. It's a really cool rope. And obviously one of the reasons why this is a good rope is to use it with the zigzag, which all of you should be checking your zigzags for slippage. I'm going to be checking mine this weekend, but assuming that this is a completely safe zigzag, what I basically bought this rope for is for use with the zigzag and the chicane and the fact that you can pull that splice right through the zigzag. So pretty cool feature. With the flow rope, I've 
only used this a handful of times so far. I just bought it from my local saw shop and uh, I just couldn't say no to it. It's a little more expensive than some other ropes, but I thought it'd be fun to try. Definitely as a moving rope, um, moving system rope, I, it flows so nicely. That's, that's the name. Um, but I did not like it as much for a single rope because it was pretty bouncy, a lot more bouncy than even my Yale Blue Moon or Hyper Climb. So not ideal for, you know, if you are looking for maximum efficiency, but I obviously still got up the tree. I, it wasn't like it was, you know, a problem at all ascending, but you just notice a lot more bounce on your steps. So just something to keep in mind. Oh, another reason why I wanted this rope is that I recently purchased one of the Teufelberger Fimble Climbs. And to use those small thimbles, you pretty much have to have either a not spliced rope or something with this skinny splice or like the Teufelberger Splice or whatever that's called. Slice, slice, slice. I really like that. I can use the Fimble Climb, pop those right through. It goes through the thimbles super nicely and with that little cone and uh, you're ready to rock. So cool rope, little bouncy, probably gonna be primarily a moving rope system. So this would be something I'd save for like smaller to medium climbs versus, you know, my more staticky ropes I can do for big like cottonwood ascents. And finally, I just wanna talk about my absolutely favorite rope. This is just, everyone already knows it, but it's the Yale Blue Moon. This is my definitely my dirtiest, most used rope. Uh, it's the one I've owned for the longest, probably probably going four and four or five years now. I just really enjoyed having a sturdy, very durable rope. This is the one that I pretty much reserve for all my tree work now, because um, I I don't mind if it gets dirty. I've had it the longest. It's again, it's super durable. It's a wonderful rope. I think everyone should buy a Yale rope at some point whether that's the poison ivy, blue moon, any of the silver, other other ivies, etc. cetera. I, I just really like it. It's it's probably a rope that, and, and color pattern that I'm always gonna have. It's like a classic rope, right? It's pretty much the first one I was issued for to use at work and uh, definitely the first rope I bought myself personally. I don't know, what's your favorite rope? I'm interested, seriously. I would like to know more about different ropes. I need to learn more about rope construction and styles and feels. And uh, I, I'm kind of on a journey of discovering some rope. And eventually, when I get my new shop space set up, uh, splicing ropes is gonna be a priority for that shop space. So here's the challenge that I have for you now. I want to buy a new rope, but I, I'm not certain of what rope to try. I'll probably make a poll on Instagram asking what people's rope suggestions are. I'm also going to post a poll that's, you know, in the description below here uh, to a Google form. You just either select from the ropes that I noted or recommend another type of rope. And I'd like to know a reason why, just because I'd like to know your opinion as to why I should try that rope. You're buying my next rope for me. So tell me what you like, tell me why, and you'll see it on the next one, hopefully. So thank you. 